cat? Does anyone know who knows your cat? Yeah. Couple, I heard a couple, yeah. Okay. So, Kevin's street cat is not my cat. My cat's not that cool. Um, you'll see Kevin's street cat over and over. He'll just show up. Okay. He doesn't need anything. So, first thing we're talking about is chemistry. What is chemistry? I'll give you a hint, it's up there. It's the study of matter and energy. Okay? Chemistry, study of matter and energy. Okay? We're by far going to spend much more time on the matter part than the energy part. But we will talk about energy. Energy falls a little more in the physics side, but energy affects matter, so we're going to talk about all of it. Matter is anything that occupies space, meaning it has a volume, we'll talk about volume, and also has mass, we'll talk about
mixture. Okay? These are exactly what they sound like. A pure substance is something that is the same thing all the way through. If I have, uh, in that bottle of water over there, there's water. And water is a pure substance. All that's in there is water. Okay? What's an example of something in here that you think is going to be a mixture? Sorry? Kool Aid would be a mixture. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coffee is a mixture. Okay? Not everything in there I means there is no coffee. Coffee is water with whatever comes out of the coffee bean, right? They're mixed together. Right? Pure substances can be broken down further. Pure substances can either be elements or compounds. The easiest way to figure out if something is an element or a compound is to look at the periodic table. If it's on the periodic table, it's a periodic table of what? Elements. elements. If it's up there, it's an element. If it's a pure substance, but it's not up there, it's a compound. Okay? Easy enough, right? You don't have to memorize anything. You look up there, it's up there, it's not. An element is any substance that we can't break down, even if we use a chemical reaction. Okay? The periodic table, the elements, there are building blocks. Okay? When you're making a, a brick house, you start with brick. Brick is the simplest thing you have, right? You, you don't have something as part of a brick. You have bricks. Okay? So element cannot be broken down any further. Okay. Compound can. Okay. Water is an example of a compound. We'll talk about these. What anybody knows the chemical formula for water? It's H2O, right? It's hydrogen, it's oxygen. You can break those down, you can break water down into hydrogen and oxygen. Once you have those, you can't break those down anymore. Those are your elements. Water, when they come together, is your compound. Okay. These are all of the known elements. Okay. You'll, we'll find out later, you can make elements. Okay. There are things called subatomic particles, and you just mash them together, you can make your own elements. Okay. But, so what's up here are all the ones that have currently today been made. And most of the, what we're going to be dealing with in this class is about the first upper half. The one at the bottom, unless you're a nuclear physicist, you don't deal with. So this is the periodic table. It looks slightly different than that, but it's just how, how it was drawn. If you look, each element is in the same exact place. These numbers will all be the same. It's just how that person drew it. Okay. So we saw pure substances can be elements or compounds. Elements can be broken down further into metals or nonmetals. Okay? If you were going to look at something and classify it as a metal or nonmetal, how would you do that? If I held this up and said, is this made of metal or nonmetal? Does it conduct electricity? Let's do it. Is it shiny? Is it shiny? Duck top. Basically, get color. Okay. So here are some some elements. Okay. We're going to see which ones are metals, which ones are not metals. Would you say phosphorus is a metal or a non-metal? Non-metal. Non-metal. Non Why? Because it's not shiny. It's not shiny. Right? You you're looking at that. You don't know if it conducts electricity. You don't know if it does that. But you know that it's not shiny. Copper. Is it metal or non-metal? Metal. Or both. Metal. <laughs> it's, it's tarnished. If you, if you polish that, it would be it's kind of like a, a new penny with bricks in the cold. What about bromine? It, it's in this little vial, it's a liquid, it's a red liquid. It's not a metal, right? What about nickel? Metal. Lead? Metal. Gold? Metal. Carbon? Metal. It looks shiny though, doesn't it? <laughs> Yeah, so if, if you were able to 
test it, you would see it's not ductile, it doesn't conduct electricity. So one, it can't be a metal there. The shininess is kind of a, it's a gray area between shininess and kind of sparkles. Okay? So this, this has some smooth surfaces that will reflect light. Okay? You know glass is not a metal, right? But it, it reflects a little bit, right? So you just kind of have to guess. Is it shiny or is it sparkly? You look at those and you know that's shiny. I mean, you've known the word shiny since you're that tall, right? You know what a metal looks like. There's something different about that, right? It's hard to put into words, but it's different. Everybody see that? Okay. What about aluminum? Metal, not metal. Metal. Sulfur? Not metal. Tin? Metal. 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 Metals, shiny, conduct electricity. We're not even going to touch on the ductile part. That is correct. Okay. So metals are shiny and they conduct the energy. What's ductile? Ductile means it's kind of you can manipulate it. You can stretch it. You can squish it. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. moldable. But most metals you have to be hot. I mean, you can't just take a, a steel bar. And <laughs> press it. Okay. Non-metals are dull and they don't conduct electricity. Okay. So metal is a specific, that's a more specific classification. If it's shiny and it conducts ele conduct electricity, it's a metal. If it's, it's not shiny or it doesn't conduct electricity, it's non-metal. So you have metal and you have everything else. If it's not a metal, it's a non-metal. So, let's look at the periodic table. Okay, do you remember what was phosphorus, a metal or non metal? Non metal. Non metal. Where is phosphorus? Phosphorus is right there. Okay, was gold a metal or a non metal? Metal. 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 Gold is there. Carbon was a non metal, it's there. Copper was a metal, it is. Right in here, somewhere. Copper. There we go. There's copper. Is bromine was a non-metal. Bromine is there. Aluminum was a metal. Aluminum is there. Sulfur was non-metal. There. Nickel was a metal. It is there. Nickel. Lead was a metal. Lead is here. And tin was a metal. Tin is here. You see a pattern? It's separated in what way? Well, you have metals in one little area. They put your non-metals in the other area, but it's also related to the common. So, what, what area are the metals in? In the center. The middle? The middle. They're in the center, right? We actually didn't have. If I told you sodium is a metal, sodium is there, okay? Now, how would you say it? Is it in the Well, isn't it, isn't it like a type of metal? Like yeah, so there, there are multiple types of metals. Yeah, so like if, so you have one part that's like your main metal, and then you have, that kind of transitions are kind of the in-between. Right. So, so the way to remember this is metals are on the left, non-metals are on the right, okay? And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, there's a line drawn here. It's called a stair step, okay? That stair step separates the metals from the non-metals, okay? And the things that are on that stair step are called metalloids. They're kind of halfway in between, okay? So remember, we don't, we're not going to deal with metalloids very much, okay? They have very strange properties. They're hard to work with. Okay, we're we're going to deal with things that are definitely metals, things that are definitely non-metals. Okay, so remember, metals are on what side? Right. Non-metals are on what side? Right. Right. That's right. all you got to remember. Okay, matter is made up of atoms. You've certainly heard of atoms. You may not have a great idea what atoms are, but you know they're tiny little. Right? So an atom is the smallest 
unit of an element that is still that element. Okay? So if we have if I have this key, we're gonna say this key is made out of nickel. It's not. But we'll, we'll say that the key is made of nickel. Nickel is a metal, okay? Let's say that everything in this key is nickel. It's made up of nickel atoms. Okay? We can break this key down into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until we get down to individual nickel atoms. To break down those atoms any further into pieces of an atom, it's no longer nickel, it's no longer an element. Okay. So an atom of an element is the most basic building block there is. Okay. It's like Lego. Every element is a different shaped Lego can't break a Lego, right? You can take different Legos and put them into different combinations and different shapes and everything. Like, if you can break a Lego, just step on it. Of the Lego. No, but I'll break your foot, not the Lego. Depends on how much it weighs. Maybe one of those big flat eight sheets will crack. But okay, so an atom is the smallest piece of an element that you can have. Every element has a name. And a symbol. Names are simple. Symbols they have either one or two letters. Okay? If you look up there, some of them sodium or sodium is Na, hydrogen is H, helium is H E. Everything has one or two letters. Okay. A lot of them are easy. Hydrogen is H, lithium is L I, uh, rubidium is R B. Nitrogen is N, carbon C. Why is iron attached to E? Where does that come from? Ferris. Ferris. Latin. Okay. A lot of the names come from Latin. Okay. So iron, the Latin name is ferrous. Uh, sodium, Na, that comes from Latin. Potassium is K, that's Latin. Gold and silver are A, U, A, G, those are all Latin. A lot of them you can mem memorize just because they make sense. The other ones you just have to memorize. Okay. There's no way you're gonna unless you know Latin, unless you know your elements in Latin, you're not gonna be able to figure it out on a quiz what A U is. Okay. So these are some of the ones that are derived from Latin names. Copper, C U is kind of like Copper, but it's cuprous, um, some of the other common ones, sodium and natrium, Na, potassium, calium, or calium, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, that's why it's K. Okay. The ones that are not blacked out are the ones that you're going to be required to memorize for the first quiz. Okay. The rest of the semester, you will have periodic tables available to you. When we take that first quiz, that will be covered up, okay? It's to your advantage to have these memorized regardless, though, because if you have to look up what Na is every time sodium comes up in this class, you're gonna spend the entire semester looking up what Na stands for, okay? Most of the ones that come up really often, if you do it enough time to have repetition, you're gonna remember it, okay? Yeah. Do you need to remember the atomic number and the atomic mass? No. So the only thing you have to memorize is to be able to go between name and symbol. Both directions. If I give you CO, you need to be able to tell me that's cobalt. If I give tell, tell you oxygen, you need to tell me that the symbol is O. Okay? Make so sense? basically the name, the symbol, where it's located? You don't even have to know where it's located. You don't have to know where it's located. Okay. Just be able to go back and forth between symbol and name. Even on the final, final exam, you're going to have periodic tables. One thing you have to memorize anything for the periodic table is the first quiz. Next week, a week from today. Okay? Atoms can be combined together. When we combine atoms, we call them molecules. A molecule is anything that's made up of more than one atom, even if they're the same element. Okay? If you have two hydrogens together, 
that's the, that's in, at, at the molecule, okay? So you have a hydrogen and a chlorine together at the molecule, okay? There are two atoms together. If you have 50 hydrogens and 100 cadmiums together, that's like one giant molecule. We've now talked about the left-hand side here. The elements, the metals, non-metals, okay? Let's talk about the compounds, okay? A compound is a pure substance made up of at least two elements, and it is combined in a definite proportion. What I mean by that is in water, for every two hydrogens, one oxygen. Okay? If you have a whole bunch of water molecules, there's going to be two hydrogens for every one oxygen. Okay? And those two hydrogens and one comp one oxygen are all bound to each other. Okay? That's a, a molecule and that is a compound. Okay? There are a whole bunch of water molecules floating around in that in that uh, bottom. Iron pyrite is an example of a compound. I believe that that is iron and sulfur combined, okay? This is a mixture of iron and sulfur. Do you see the difference? This is, it's a, it's a thing, right? And this is two things that are just mixed together, okay? This is its own thing, these are two separate things that so that's the cake and that's the balance. Yeah, you can say it that way. You can say it that way. So is it like a balance? Like one's got to be balanced a certain way and the other one, because yeah. it's not, it's not working. So right. a compound, water, you're always going to have two hydrogens for every oxygen. But if you mix hydrogen and oxygen, you can have any ratio that you want, right? Name an amount, and you can have that one hydrogen and that one oxygen. Okay. A compound, the properties of a compound are different than the properties of the elements that make it up. So, what does an oxygen look like? Where, how would you describe oxygen? It's invisible, <laughs> solid liquid gas. Gas. Yes. A gas. Does anybody know what hydrogen is like? It's, it's a, hydrogen is a gas. It's hydrogen around here. Is it water like either of those? No. no. Completely different, right? It has its own set of properties. Okay. So water is a compound. If you put electricity, a lot of electricity in water, you can break it apart into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay? It's called electrolysis. And you get hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. And actually, if we look at this, you see how that tube has twice as much gas as that tube? Which one do you think has the hydrogen? Which one has the oxygen? Well, well, right. right. There's two hydrogens in every water molecule to, for every one oxygen. So you get twice as much hydrogen gas as you do oxygen. So a compound is combined chemically and can also be broken down chemically? Yes. That's a very good thing. Sand is a compound called silicon dioxide. Looking at that formula, what do you get out of that formula? What does that tell you about silicon dioxide? One silicon, two oxygen. That is, there, there, there's no aluminum in that. It's just silicon and oxygen. And that there's one silicon and two oxygen. The ones are assumed, okay? If you see a symbol and there's no little subscript, that means it's a one, okay? You don't need to write the one. If it's anything other than one, you have to write it, okay? So, is that an element or a compound? An element. An element, why? It's 
No subscript. No. It's just an element. It's up there. It's right there. That's the easiest way to figure it out. If someone had to prove to me that's an element, I can prove it. Right? It's right there. Is it an element or a compound? Compound. It's a compound. Water is not on the periodic table. Sodium chloride, salt. Compound or element? Compound made up of the element sodium chloride. How about copper? It's an element. It is right there. Easy enough, right? A mixture is two or more elements or compounds mixed together. Okay? Say I have water and I have sand. I, okay, I can put sand in the water, shake it up, and I have a mixture of sand and water, right? You can separate a mixture by what's what we call physical process. Okay? If you just let a mixture of sand and water sit, the sand is going to sink, right? It, by, by itself, by gravity, it's going to separate itself, right? If you got a little tiny set of tweezers, you could take every single piece of sand out of that, right? But with water itself, the hydrogen and the oxygen aren't going to separate from each other by gravity. You can't use the tweezers to grab the hydrogen, because when you grab the hydrogen, the other hydrogen and the oxygen are going to come with it. Okay? They're chemically bound together. Okay? So the way to define something as a mixture is if you can separate it by a physical process, which means you don't need a chemical reaction. <coughs> if you can just do it, it's a mixture. Okay? An example of a mixture is pencil lead. Okay? I don't know what exactly is a pencil lead. I know that there's graphite. Just, just some, say, say this, let's say there's lead and graphite. Okay? They're just, actually, let's say it's graphite and iron. Okay? You had graphite and iron. Pencil lead. How do you think you could separate those out in a physical process, not a chemical reaction? Mm -hmm. What would happen immediately? Mm -hmm. Well, the graphite melts at different temperature than the. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good way. That's something we use in chemistry a lot. You have different melting points. The, lead, the, the iron would turn the, the liquid before the graphite did. So then the liquid would drain away. Right? What is something else you know about iron? What's the property of iron? It's magnetic. It's magnetic. Mm -hmm. Carbon is, is not, graphite is not. So if you ground that pencil lead up and you held a magnet over it, the iron is going to come up and stick to the magnet, the graphite is going to be left behind. Okay? That's a mixture that you're separating physical processes. They're not chemical reactions. Okay? Salt water is a mixture. Salt, sodium chloride, and water. How can you separate the water and salt? Yeah. Evaporate it. The water comes off of the gas, right? It kind of evaporates off, and you're left with salt. And actually, air is a mixture. I mean, you probably know it's probably heard it's mostly nitrogen. It's like 70% nitrogen, 11% oxygen, and then sorry, 1% oxygen. There you go. He knows it's good air. <laughs> it's a lot harder to come up with a way to separate those through a physical process, but it can be done. Okay? It has to do with, they're all different sizes, and they actually move at different speeds, well, that weeks from now. But you can actually separate different types of gas out from a mixture of air. Is that kind of like, because um, for my apartment complex, I work where they go in and they do an ozone treatment, okay. which kind of like sucks out all the air that kind of like that they're doing like separating the air I, I honestly don't know what they're doing well it's like it's the odors though and it's like I walked in on one and they're like he could pass out because they took all the air all the oxygen ozone is very reactive mm -hmm. so what I'm guessing is it's probably breaking down the molecules that are that it's smelling mm -hmm. it probably break those molecules down so that they're now more elements or smaller compounds smaller molecules that they're so they're not like separating it out, they're just 
they're probably not even touching oxygen, nitrogen, things like that. They're they're getting the rotting you know, stuff like that. So this is salt being separated by evaporation. If you go to the store and you buy sea salt, this is what you're getting. They actually just kind of take a little piece of ocean, they wall it off, and wait for it to evaporate. That's all it is. Of course, they may probably uh, make it safe to eat. They uh, cut out to kill everything. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's that, that, that's what you're getting. And it, anyone who lives up north, you've seen piles of salt that they put on the road. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. But they don't even bother treating it. They just take it from the ocean and put it in a pile <laughs> and put it on the road. So, of course, we can break everything down further. And that's what we keep doing, right? Mixtures can actually be broken down also. So there are what we call homogeneous mixtures. And they're what we call heterogeneous mixtures. A homogeneous mixture is the same throughout. A heterogeneous mixture is not the same throughout. Okay? What's an example of a homogeneous mixture you can think of? Something that's a mixture, but is the same the whole way through. Take a look at these. You said salt water with a homogeneous mixture. What about lake water? Assume you actually go to a lake and you take a sample of it. Is it homogeneous or heterogeneous? Heterogeneous. You're probably going to have silt and stuff, maybe a fish. Okay? What about tap water? Homogeneous, heterogeneous? Homogeneous. Air? Homogeneous. The air up here is the same as the air back there. Right? What about grass? I'm, I'm giving you that brass is something called an alloy of copper, a mixture of copper and zinc. If you had a piece of brass, would you say it was homogeneous or heterogeneous? Mm -hmm. Homogeneous. Mm -hmm. If I had a, a brass bar, the left end of the bar is no different than the right end of the bar, right? It's homogeneous throughout. Okay. What about potting soil? Mm -hmm. that is heterogeneous. You have soil, you have little pieces of whatever in there. It's certainly not all the same. You can look at it and see different things. So what chocolate chip cookie dough? <laughs> so it's heterogeneous. It's kind of it's heterogeneous if you consider the chocolate chip. You can kind of make a case if you a chocolate chip cookie dough, the dough itself is basically homogeneous, right? Right. So a lot of these things are dependent on how you look at it. Okay. On homework, on a quiz, on an exam, if you think, well, it depends on how you look at it, tell me how you're looking at it. Okay? Yeah. Can you make a case with brass? I mean, you know brass tarnishes that over time. So He's thinking too. Yeah, so brass tarnishes. At that point, you now have a heterogeneous mixture. You have the untarnished brass in the center and the tarnished brass on the outside. Those are separated. That's heterogeneous. Right? So on homework, you tell me homogeneous if it's not tarnished, heterogeneous if it's tarnished. Okay? You may see a way of looking at something and I don't. And if I say, well, what is she talking about? Of course it's not heterogeneous. But if you point out to me why it is, you're going to get credit. Yeah. So how is the cookie dough homogeneous? If you look, if you know that the, 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 the,
sugar cookie. Okay. Do you see how that homogeneous? Yeah. yeah. Right. So chocolate chip cookie dough with the chocolate chip heterogeneous. If you talk about just the dough, uh -huh. that's homogeneous. Oh, okay. So depending on how you look at it, how you want to frame it, no. you can make a case for either one. Just tell me which case you're making. big long flow chart. This is what we talked about and what we did. If you want to define something as one of these things there at the top, answer the question, it'll help. Okay? Take a, let's take a 15 minute break. So we'll start at quarter till on the back clock.
blue one, you have black ones, right? They're just mixed together. They don't, they're not connected to each other, they're not bound together, they're just mixed together, it's a mixture. How about that one? It's a mixture. It's a mixture of an element and the compound, okay? That is a mixture of two elements, right? Because there's a single atom here, that's a compound, that's a compound, element, element. But it's still a mixture. I don't know about that one. It's a, it's a mixture of two different compounds. There's these three and then that. One way we can classify matter, we've been doing this for years and years, but by states of matter, solid, liquid, gas. Okay. Yes, there's plasma in this class. We don't talk about plasma. Okay. What would you say the macroscopic properties of each of the solid liquid gas? If you were to describe a solid to me, how would you describe it? Uh, heavy. Hard, heavy, dense, dense, dense tightened together. Tighten together. What would you say about the volume of a solid? If you have a piece of solid, if it, this is a solid, right? Does the volume of this change? No. no. What about the shape of this? Does the shape of this change? No. no. A solid, the volume, and the shape don't change. Okay? Well, how would you explain a liquid? Volume. Consistent volume. Consistent volume. But the shape, but the shape changes. But the shape changes to fit whatever it's in. Right? It should change. Yeah. So, yeah. So we can go between these states of matter, right? Well, we'll definitely talk about that. How would you describe a gas? A gas is why you can change the area of the shape. Right. Pressure. So the, the the volume changes to match its container, and the shape changes to match its container. So a solid, they're both set in stone. Right? Stone is a solid. Side, shape, or set. The liquid, now that now the shape can change, and you go to a gas, the shape and the volume can change. Okay? And you do know all that, you just never probably put it into words. If you were describing it at the molecular level, how would you describe solids, liquids, and gases? Solids are uh, if they move all that slow. Right. So if they're liquid, they move a little faster. Yeah, yep. So in solids, molecules move very, very, very slowly at all. Really, they just vibrate in place. In liquids, they move around very slowly. In gases, they move very fast. How close are they together in a solid? Really, very really close. close. Somebody said dense. I don't remember who said dense, but solids are dense. The atoms are compressed together. In a liquid, how far apart do you think the molecules are? There's some space. They're further apart than a solid, but they're still pretty close. I mean, if you take something that's a solid and you melt it into a liquid, the volume changes a little bit, but not a whole lot, right? Now, how would you explain a gas? It's very spaced up, okay? We'll talk about this. 18 grams of water, 18 milliliters of water, if you have an idea of how much that is. That's 18 milliliters would barely fill that Expo mark. Okay. If you turn that much water into a gas, it would take fill up 22.4 liters of gas. That's a lot, right? So the atoms really spread out when you go from a liquid to a gas. Okay. This is what we talked about. Um, solids, liquids, gases, shape and the volume. Um, don't really worry about the pressure in the, the, in the, the mass, uh, particles, what shape they're in. We're going to talk about that in a lot more detail in a later year. Okay. So we, we do come back, gases have their whole, uh, whole unit to themselves, and then solids and liquids share a unit. So we're going to talk a lot about this. Okay. This is that. One thing you know about gas is gases can be compressed, right? You can use a bite size, take a whole bunch of gas, the air, and compress it into a little container inside that bite tube, right? You can't really compress liquids and gases, right? 
And that's because in the gas, the molecules are a long ways apart, so you can bring them closer. In the solid, they're already basically touching each other. You can't make them come any closer. Okay. And there are, of course, phase or state changes. In this case, the water, you have this is cold water, you have water vapor, water gas from the air condensing on the cold glass, right? And then you also have water here evaporating out of the glass, right? It's going from a liquid to a gas. And we write these symbols in our chemical equations and our chemical form. Okay? So, if we have a solid, put this little s in parentheses at the end. So that is bromine stop. Okay? We're going to talk about a lot more about these symbols and how you write the symbols like that. At this point, I'm telling you, Br2 is bromine. Okay? And then it's solid bromine, it's liquid bromine, that's bromine gas, and then that, Aq means aqueous. It means it's dissolved in the water. So if you had bromine that was dissolved in water, you would put Br2 in an aqueous in parentheses. Okay? In almost every chemical equation, you have to remember to write these little what we call state symbols. Okay? Because what state the compound or element is in is going to determine how it reacts. So we write sodium chloride, NaCl. Probably already knew that, even though if you didn't know why that is. You know, sodium chloride is NaCl. It's a solid room temperature, right? So we write NaCl with an S. How do you how would you describe sodium chloride in a macroscopic level? What's a salt look like? Light little crystals. Light little crystals. That's pretty much all you can describe it as. What do you think sodium chloride looks like on a molecular scale? We haven't looked. We haven't looked at this yet. Looks good, smoothly. Well, on, on the molecular, so the, not even a microscope, but at the molecular level, how you would draw it. What do you think that looks like? Six and balls. Six and balls. <laughs> actually, we'll find out when we're talking about compounds. Sodium chloride actually is just balls. There's no six. Right? But. Because I don't have it here. So sodium chloride, if you're going to draw it, is just what, what does NaCl tell you about the ratio then? One, 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 one to one, right? So basically all you have is you have a sodium atom next to a chlorine atom, next to a sodium atom, next to a chlorine atom, and just we have a giant mass of that. That's what sodium chloride looks like at the molecular level. Can it also be the, um, instead of an S, that AQ? Yeah. So, yeah, so you know sodium chloride dissolves in water, right? So if you put sodium chloride into water, this actually, we're going to talk about this a lot, this breaks apart, okay? It no longer looks like this when it's aqueous. Okay. So what would be NaCl, Yeah. Well, you can, you can have NaCl, a Q, but what we'll see is that is actually in water, you have sodium plus chloride. They're separated. So that would be the proper way to write it? Well, they both mean the same thing. Okay. In some cases, you need to write it that way. In some cases, you need to write it that way. But we're not at this point yet. So okay. don't worry about this. So matter has two types of properties. They're chemical properties, they're physical properties. Okay? Most things, if you can observe it without changing it, it's a physical property. Chemical properties, you only see them during a chemical reaction. Okay? A physical property, if you can observe it without changing its composition. Okay? It is the same thing at the end as it is at the beginning. We just did something to it to observe it. Okay? Temperature, color, things like that. We can see those without changing it, right? 
how we can smell something. We smell something, we don't change what it is, we just smell it. These are what we call qualities. You, you can't find a number unless you write fake websites and you know HTML. You can't put a number to a color, right? You can't put a number to a smell. It, it smells like it smells. It, the color is what it is. Mass, volume, density, and temperature are physical properties, but we can put numbers to those, right? You know something has a specific density. You can look up a density of something. That's quantity. That's quantity, yes. Mass, if something has a certain mass, you put it on a scale, it's going to tell you the mass of this marker. It's a number. Same thing with volume and temperature. There are numbers that goes with those. You can measure those. Physical change is a change that changes the physical properties. Okay? But it doesn't change what it is. Okay? Something, a change in physical state is a physical change. If we take water and boil it, we go from liquid water to gas water, right? It's still H2O here and H2O here. It's still H2O, but the properties of the water are very different than the properties of the steam, the gas, right? We changed the properties, but we didn't change the chemical composition. Okay. This is evaporation. It can also be called vaporization. Okay. Either word is fine to use. You know evaporation, how is it that you do evaporation? Okay. This is going from liquid water to gas or gas water. Here, the molecules are very close together. You're moving around a little bit. You go from that, and now they're really spread out. Okay. Have you ever heard of sublimation? Have you ever played with dry ice? Mm -hmm. It goes from a solid to a gas, right? Mm -hmm. It's never a liquid. Going from a solid to a gas is called sublimation. Just like going from a liquid to a gas is called evaporation, solid to a gas is called sublimation. Dry ice is CO2. There's certainly a lot of CO2 around, right? We breathe it up. We make that into a solid, looks like that, and then it just turns into gas, okay? If we were going to draw the molecular level representation for sublimation, what would the CO2 look like here? It'd be spread apart. It'd be spread apart, right? It's a gas, right? Here, that's a gas, too. So it would look just like that, except it'd be CO2 instead of H2O. The only difference mm -hmm. is here, the this side, the liquid, on this side, it's a solid, okay? We're not doing chemical equations yet, but we need to touch on, this arrow means yield, or goes to, okay? This is the beginning, that's the end, okay? You'll write a lot of arrows, you don't really have to deal with them now, just know that that means that is turned into that. Make sense? Okay. So again, that's what it would look like. These are our physical state transitions. We need to know all of them. Okay? A lot of them you already know. You know that liquid to a gas is vaporization or evaporation. You probably know gas to a liquid is condensation. You know melting and freezing. The only ones you probably need to work on memorizing are sublimation and deposition. We said sublimation is solid to a gas. Deposition is the opposite. It's going from a gas to a solid. The way I remember that is deposition has the word deposit on it. When you, when you do this, you have a gas. You can't see a gas, right? All of a sudden, you have a solid appearing. And I, I, I imagine it as the solid being deposited on whatever you're working on. Okay. Whether you can imagine that and it helps you remember it, or you just have to memorize it, whichever way it works for you. Okay. We're actually going to do sublimation and deposition in lab. So at that point, you'll see it. That should help you, help you visualize it. Chemical change is any process where the substances are converted into new substances. A chemical change is a chemical reaction. Okay? And we're going to do a lot of chemical reactions. 
Yeah. So coming to reaction, you probably can imagine that changes what you have, right? If you start with two things, you mix them, and you react them, you're gonna make something new, right? That's why you do chemical reactions. You don't like what you have, you want something new. An example of a chemical change is when pennies tarnish, or when steel rusts. That copper that's oxidizing, tarnishing, is no longer the same as the copper that was there. It's not copper with oxygen. It's not iron with oxygen that rusts. When you burn gasoline, it's no longer gasoline. It's now a whole bunch of things that are gases, right? What goes into the engine is nowhere near what comes out of the other end, right? That's a chemical change. Burning things is a chemical change. Hydrogen and oxygen reacting to form water. It's a chemical change. You're going from hydrogen gas to oxygen gas to H2O, which is liquid water. Okay. So this is molecular, molecular level representation of formation of water. Here we have the red oxygen, the white hydrogen. They combine, and clearly, these things are different than over here, right? Ways that you can know a chemical reaction or a chemical change has happened is if there's bubbling. Now you have to keep in mind, if you boil something, that's evaporation, that is a physical change. That, but that bubbles, right? This is bubbling without boiling. You know if you mix car or vinegar and baking soda, it bubbles, right? But you probably also know that's not boiling. That's releasing bubbles, right? That's a chemical change. So you have a permanent color change. If you take wood and burn it, it starts out brown, it ends up black. There's no making that go back to brown. It's permanently black. That means a chemical change has occurred. There are some things that we'll see Think of a mood ring. It changed in color when the temperature changed, right? But if you put it back to the old, it's old temperature, the color goes back. That's not a permanent color change. That's a physical change. You don't have, you have a sudden change in temperature, it's a chemical change. Burning gasoline goes very quickly from room temperature to very hot, right? Burning anything goes from room temperature to very hot, very quickly. That's evidence of a chemical reaction. Boiling would be a, um, no. It takes time to get to that. Yeah, it, it, it takes a lot of time. You have to, you get to put the energy in yourself to make the temperature go up with the stove, and the water is just going from liquid to gas. So all for all of those reasons, it's a physical change. There it is. Boiling water, chemical and physical change. Physical change. Okay. Okay. What? So it's H2O here, it's H2O here, it's not a chemical change, right? If it's not a chemical change, by definition, by default, it's a physical change. Did you say this is a physical change or a chemical change? Why? They're different. There's none of this over here, and there's none of this over here. Even if you don't know what exactly happened, you can see that the little balls on this side are different than the balls on the left side. It's a chemical change. Things change. Physical or chemical? Physical. Physical. So what would you say? Have we seen, have you seen this before? Have we? What is it? Dry ice. Dry ice. Solid. Gas. What's that process called? Uh, Sublimation. Yeah. Okay. Physical, chemical change? Physical. Physical. You still feel it. Okay. Okay. So here's another one where you get to use your cell phone. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I have to go to the website and I can only have one poll live at a time. So I just need to get So this poll should now 
be the one that has that the same URL, but this poll should be the one that's there. Okay. So, anybody know what does the picture of? Coffee filter. Tie dye. How did you get that tie dye? Has anyone ever done that? <laughs> we have missed this particular. This is a sort of a, a science fair type. No one's done it? Okay. So what this is, this is a coffee filter that you color the center of it black with a black marker. Okay? And then all you did is you folded it up into a cone and set the, the point that's black into a cup of water. Okay? And the water soaked, of course, up the coffee filter. And when it got off the top, that is what you now have. Remember, it started with a black dot in the center. Okay? Do you think that is a chemical change or a physical change? Go ahead and we'll just, just send in your answer. If you, you can go to the website and I think it will let you choose chemical or physical. If you want chemical, text VAT number. VAT number. If you want physical, text VAT number to that. Yourselves, try to convince that you all have the same answer. Okay? So, two people thought chemical and are in three so one group's got to done. Who knows what group that is? I don't. So, talk amongst yourselves. And then, what we're going to do is we're going to go back to individuals, we're going to clear this. Then, you're all going to make your own vote again. If, you, if you're one of the ones who said chemical and you think everyone else is wrong, you can continue to vote chemical. Okay? So just try to, you're all trying to convince each other to vote your way. Chose. 
Everyone feels they can defend themselves. <laughs> That's probably a good thing. Everybody can choose the battle, right?
So the black in this marker is a rainbow. A mixture of red and bright G bit. But all of all of those chemicals, all those dyes move at different speeds. This is what's called chromatography. Okay? They all have different, they all dissolve in water at a different level. The ones that dissolve really well moved a long ways with the water. The ones that didn't dissolve well didn't move very far. The red in the center didn't dissolve, it didn't move. Okay? So that's what happened. Okay? So, yeah, go ahead. So, because they're all together at the beginning, but the zinc actually is different. Um, yeah, the color of the red word. My turn. Is it actually <laughs> a different molecule as it would be spread? Yeah, but. I don't think. In this class, raising hands is great, but I, I want to encourage the conversation. So, yes, you need to, when someone else is, is talking, you need to respect them. But we also need to be courteous to the other people. Okay. Okay. So respect to someone is talking, but even when someone else says something that you may think isn't courteous, be courteous back to them. Okay. So I, that question is a very important question. So now that we've talked about what happens here, I'm going to clear the results again, and now you're going to say, now that you know what happens, do you think that the chemical Physical shape. Oh, if you get charged, don't don't worry about it. I don't know who's sending it in or not. Right off on your taxes. If you have Wi-Fi, you can go to the website. Right. So, 
refraction. I know, I understand that, but the point is, what we see right now, what we see in that piece of paper, is what we perceive as different colors. And the colors are based on how light passes through anything and reflects or diffuses through it for us to perceive the color. That doesn't necessarily mean it isn't the exact same, same chemical composition it was before, it's just that the density has changed. A color, a, a color is a wave, and we'll talk about this later on. Every color has a certain wavelength of light that we perceive as a color. Okay, so there are multiple ways that you can separate those wavelengths. You can do it with a prism or a different refraction. We talk about the atmosphere. Okay, you have all these wavelengths of light moving through the air, and they actually get separated. Okay, and with our dyes. The way you separate them is that different chemicals, different compounds will absorb different wavelengths and you see whatever didn't get absorbed. Okay? So here, in the center, we have a compound that's absorbing everything but the red. Okay? Here we have everything that's absorbing everything but the yellow. Orange is a mixture of red and yellow, so you're getting seeing some red, some yellow and coming out. So and actually, as you go out, you have different compounds that are there. Okay? When you start it, in here, all of those compounds are here. They're mixed together. Okay? So any bit of the blue that this compound doesn't absorb, that one's going to. So you see no light. Black is the absence of light. Okay? So no light comes from it. So all of the compounds that are here are the same compounds that are here. All we did is move them, like you said. Right? So is that a physical or a chemical change? Is that reversible or is that non-reversible? Let's put it this way. <laughs> is it, is it, there's a difference between practically reversible that you can actually do, or can you imagine a way that you could if you were a Superman, could you do it without a chemical reaction? Somehow. If you were tiny and you could grab all these molecules that are here and put them back in the middle, and you took all of these here and put them back in the middle, you'd go back to a black dot in the middle. Right? Because the, the molecules that are here did not change. They just moved. So if you can find a way to move them back, it's reversible. Now there's a difference, like I said, there's a difference between actually being reversible in real life. Um, I suppose if you were to put that filter in water for a long, long time, so that all of it dissolved into the water, took the coffee filter out, and then evaporated it down, you would combine all those dyes back into one little spot, and you would have black skin. Okay. So this was a, a great example of it depends on how you look at it, right? So, well, when you have one of these, like I said, tell me what you're thinking. The more you write, the better chance I'm gonna know what you're thinking, okay? If you looked at that and you misunderstood what was actually going on, so you gave me the wrong answer, I would look at, well, what did they think was happening? Yes, that's wrong, so I'll take a partial part points off the bat. But assuming they were right there, they made the correct conclusion based off that. So you would get most of your points. Okay? So any questions? You guys apparently asked a lot less, a lot fewer questions than last semester. Because there was a rush to finish last semester, and now we're 15 minutes early. And there are twice as many of you. So I don't know what the, whether you were quiet, they were obnoxious. I, I didn't know what to do. That, that's, that's a physical change. All the molecules are the same. They just move. Okay. If anyone wants to stay and talk about anything, you're welcome to. The class officially doesn't end another 15 minutes, but you're free to go. In the future, if we finish early, we'll just move on. Okay. But I didn't post the next set of slides, and I thought there was no way we'd finish. Thank you.
So our work assignment is due on Tuesday? Homework assignment is due next Tuesday. Next yeah. Tuesday. Yeah. 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 Make sure you have your safety equipment and your printer.